right. Welcome back to the realm of history. Today, we're taking a look at chapter 10, which is on the Islamic world. We're going to have a little live review action. We'll go over the agenda real quick. It's pretty much the standard and the norm, uh, but I'll have some key advice for you off the bat. Uh, we'll talk about some selected key terms, figures, places, concepts. We will go over some clues on how to prepare for the short answer questions. We'll also have some AP advice and preparation tips. And then, of course, question and answer session so that I can get uh, the answers to any of the questions that you may have. And then, of course, uh, some final advice um, to, to go with that. Remember, if you're watching, hey, put a like on this and let me know in the chat uh, that you are here. I'd love to see those that are there paying attention. Okay, tonight, some key advice. Remember, write some things down from this session. Use the back of your review sheet. Use notebook paper. The students who are writing things down from these sessions seem to be doing really well on the quizzes. Uh, so there's definitely a correlation between attending and then also taking notes off of these sessions. Number two, pray for the right things. Remember, uh, in the big scheme of things, this quiz on Thursday is, is really a small part of that. Uh, so make sure that you're praying for the Lord's guidance to do the best that you can to use the talent to use your talents to the fullest. Number three, be here now. You know you're going to go to uh, PSAT testing tomorrow. Make sure that you're focused on that. The better that you you perform on that, the more chances you have for scholarships and offers from colleges and things of that nature. And then Thursday when you come back, you're going to have a full load of classes. You may have some other quiz papers to get ready for. So make sure that you're able to transition between those different classes and those different ideologies by using the Be Here Now strategy. Number four, I hope that you're listening to me when I tell you to do this, but Make sure that you say thank you to your parents. It, I mean, it's really important that you express your gratitude to the people who take care of you and the people who have put you in such a great position to be at Orchard Lake St. Mary's and being able to attend a live review session, getting ready for a quiz that's two days away. Uh, so make sure that you say thank you to your parents. Tell them that you love them. Express your gratitude. That's very important to me. Hopefully you're listening when I say that. If you need to go do that right now, that's more important than listening to the first couple of terms. Number five, like I always say, rise to the occasion, meet the challenge. I think the big challenge for Thursday is going to be the AP portion. Um, the AP portion is definitely going to count. No more breaks. Uh, there's going to be a full class, not like last week, which was Spirit Week, and we had a limited time frame. So this is going to be one that counts. And the challenge here is the AP portion will be a challenge. But also, it is the last group of grades going into the grade book for this marketing period. So I think you really need to focus in on this one. You want to get a great grade into that book. Uh, we will have a commercial break tonight. And the commercial break is going to be something important. And um, it's going to be kind of like a big giveaway for those of you that are in attendance, especially if you were in fifth hour, I'm sorry, sixth hour boys or eighth hour boys. There was a tie in the review game. And we're going to solve that tie tonight in the live review session with a live commercial break. I've got something planned for you to check out. Okay. That being said, we're going to get into the key terms, places, and figures. Make sure that you're following along and um, also make sure that you are writing down some things. I did not write everything down this time, uh, but I will be talking you through the main ideas. The first big picture term and concept that we really need to have an understanding of were the Bedouins. Remember that the Bedouins were some of the first people that we learned about in this chapter. So I'll talk about who the Bedouins were, but I'll also talk about the Bedouin ideals. Uh, first of all, the Bedouins were some of the earliest people in the Arabian Peninsula. They're nomadic desert dwellers, okay? They had a huge influence on the Islamic faith and formation, even though they didn't practice Islam at all. The big influence is because of their cultural ideals, the Bedouin ideals, which were courage, loyalty to the family, and also warrior skills. So you have to remember, they are from the desert. Resources are scarce, as we learned. Uh, they were they are not going to be able to go, you know, every day eating or drinking water. So sometimes they had to kind of survive for a week, maybe a couple of days without food or water. And so courage, loyalty to the family, and then warrior skills are what helped them survive. I'm not going through all the terms tonight. I've selected some that I felt like I had a lot of questions about throughout the day. So the next one is the Hijra. The Hijra is fairly simple. It's the word that refers to Muhammad's movement from the city of Mecca to the city of Medina. 
Now, the city of Medina was about 200 miles north of Mecca, and it's also called Yathrib, which was de detailed in the notes. One of the key things you need to understand about this is that Muhammad was not at first very well accepted in Mecca. He did not have a very large following. And so because of the persecution toward him and some of his followers, because he was talking about monotheism and Mecca was a place of polytheistic worship, he is kind of shunned and he leaves Mecca and he goes to Medina. While in Medina, he gains a very strong following. He becomes a political, a religious, and also a military leader there, growing his numbers into the thousands and ten thousands. Okay. Next is the Kaaba. The Kaaba or the Kaaba is an ancient shrine. Okay. If you watch the intro tonight, I had a picture of the Kaaba. I had a couple of uh, slides on the slideshow that I told you you could find. Uh, it's listed in the bulletin board uh, uh, announcements. You could take it there. But the Kaaba is basically a, a box-like structure. It was an ancient shrine originally devoted to Abraham, the father of Judaism. Eventually, it was turned into a polytheistic shrine in Mecca. Um, and then eventually, when Muhammad comes back and takes Mecca over after going to Medina for some time, he turns it back into a monotheistic shrine to the god Allah. Next, and a likely short answer possibility, the five pillars of faith. The five pillars of faith could show up in a matching, could show up in a short answer, could also show up in a multiple choice. Uh, but knowing the five pillars of faith is really twofold. You need to be able to list them, but you'll also need to be able to define them. So I'm going to do both for you right now. There's faith, prayer, alms, fasting, and pilgrimage, F-P-A-F-P. P is a good way to remember that. Now, faith. The way that Muslims express their faith is that they testified this statement. They said, there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That is what they believe, and that is the premise of their faith. Prayer. When you want to describe prayer for the Islamic world, you want to make sure that you talk about the fact that they face Mecca, and they pray five times per day. You do not need to know the exact times in which they pray, but you want to know that they will pray toward Mecca, which is meaning they're facing the Kaaba, and they will pray five times per day. Next is alms. Alms is a, is a religious tax, which goes to support the poor. Uh, when you go to church on Sunday in, in the Catholic church, you will put some money in the basket if you're a parish, parishioner or a parish member. Some of that money is meant to go to support the poor, food pantries and other on other things that the church puts on some of those donations will help in that fashion as well so it's very similar next is fasting this is referring to the month of ramadan during the month of ramadan muslims will fast they will not eat from sunrise to sunset they will eat a very small meal at the end of each day now what is ramadan okay ramadan it usually happens between June and October, sometime in that range, based on the different calendar that the Muslim world practices. We practice the Julian calendar, which comes from Julius Caesar and the Romans. They have a little bit of a different calendar. You don't need to know about the calendar. Uh, but during the month of Ramadan, which is believed to be the month in which the angel Gabriel visited and revealed the beliefs of Allah to Muhammad, that, that is what Ramadan is celebrating. And so they will fast during that month. Next is pilgrimage. The pilgrimage is also known as the Hajj, and that was a key term. Uh, when we think about the pilgrimage, it's the idea that Muslims are expected to travel to Mecca at least once in their lifetime if they are physically and financially able to do so. Um, so that that is the stipulation, that's the expectation. Okay, next is the Quran. The Quran is the Muslim holy book, okay? And it basically is believed to be the written version of the revelations. It's the written version of what we believe Muhammad had revealed to him from the angel Gabriel on behalf of Allah. Next is the Sunnah. The Sunnah is basically the idea of following Muhammad's example. Um, most Muslims, which are Sunni, believe that the Sunnah is the best way to live your life, following the way that Muhammad lived his life. 
So once again, Sunnah is following Muhammad's example or living your life in the fashion that Muhammad did. Next is something called Sharia or Sharia law. Sharia law is basically a body of laws or a code of laws in the Muslim world, which regulates things like moral conduct, family life, and community relations. Next is the House of Wisdom. House of Wisdom came from last night's homework. It was a center of learning stationed in Baghdad. It was kind of like the world's first true university or research university where scholars from around the world would come and study. One of the things that they were really well known for at the House of Wisdom uh, was translating some of the ancient Latin and Greek text into Arabic, which kept those ideas going forward. Next are the rightly guided caliphs. Now, the rightly guided caliphs are the first four caliphs, and they are the first four key leaders to represent the Muslim world after Muhammad's death in 632. Um, they are Abu Bakr, who was first, then Umar, then Uthman, and then Ali. They're all listed on your review sheet, and they are listed in the proper order. They are called the rightly guided caliphs for several reasons. The first reason is they actually knew Muhammad. They were his friends and his early followers. The second reason is that they generally followed the Sunnah, which is they generally lived their lives as, it, as did Muhammad. And so those are some of the factors of why they're called the rightly guided caliphs. Okay, next is the Sunni. Now, the Sunni is a faction or a division within the Muslim practitioner's world. The Sunni have several beliefs. Number one, they do not care who the caliph is as long as the caliph follows the sunnah, which is Muhammad's example. So they don't care if it's a, a relative of Muhammad. They don't care if it's a whole family. As long as the leaders, the caliphs, follow the example of Muhammad, that is really all that matters. The Shia, on the other hand, also known as the Shiites, have a little bit of a different ideology. The Shia in general, okay, believe that the caliph should be a bloodline relative or bloodline descendant of Muhammad. So they believe that only, only people who are related to Muhammad should be able to be the leader of the Muslim world. And these two entities have a lot of differences. Uh, they're both Muslim. They both worship the same God. Uh, but the difference of who they think should be the leader has then sprawled into how they interpret the Quran and so in today's world, they, they still have a lot of conflict because of the differences that have sprouted from, you know, 600, 700 AD. So over a thousand years ago. The Sufi are a very, very small faction of Islamic practitioners. The Sufi are like monks. They have rejected the luxurious lifestyle. They rejected material things. Their idea is to leave behind their possessions and devote their lives to poverty and to religious devotion or religious study. Next is going to be the three sources of authority. When you take a look at the three sources of authority, uh, they, we've already gone over them tonight. They are the Quran, the Sunnah, and Sharia. Uh, so once again, if we go back up here, the three sources of authority are exactly what I just taught you about, the Sunnah, the Quran, and Sharia law. Those are the things that Muslims generally believe in, and those are the things that kind of chart what Muslims are expected to follow and expected to do. Next, uh, the four social classes within Muslim society, and they were talking about back in 1200. We're not talking about modern day. You know, really, we need to put ourselves into historical perspective here. When we think about the four social classes, these are the social classes that were existing in the 1200s, which is where we are kind of historically talking about. So first you have what's called the upper class. The upper class in the Muslim world back then uh, were people that were born Muslim. So if you were born a Muslim, you were the first class or the upper class. Second class citizens in Muslim society were people who converted to the Islamic faith. Third class citizens were called the protected peoples or the peoples of the book. Those were the Christians, 
the Jewish practitioners, and a group called Zoroastrian. Zoroastrianism is a monotheistic belief in the one God, Ahura Mazda. So they don't believe in the same God as Christians and Jews and Muslims, uh, but they do practice monotheism. They believe in one God, which was called Ahura Mazda. Okay, that's what I wanted to talk about. It took about 17 minutes to go through uh, those key terms and concepts and ideas. I do want to solve the issue of who's going to get the extra credit point. We had a tie today. Sixth hour boys got four out of five questions correct, and eighth hour boys got four to five questions correct. Now, here's the deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a coin flip simulator here for this commercial break. And listen, I am not going to announce this tomorrow in school. The only people who are going to get this extra credit point are people who are here watching live right now. I'm not going to announce it to the class. If somebody asks me who won, I'm not going to be telling them tomorrow. I don't care if you want to whine. Uh, so the only people who are going to know are people who are here. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to share with you uh, just a simulator. So it's called a coin flip simulator. And I will start sharing that now. All right. So down in the... Uh, in the bottom left part of the screen, you can see there's a heads and then there's a tails. Uh, now this simulator uh, throughout the recent time has 49% heads and 51% tails. So just to keep it even, fifth hour, since they took the review game first, they're gonna be represented, I'm sorry, sixth hour boys will be represented by heads and eighth hour boys will be represented by tails. So whatever one that lands on based on this simulator will be the winners of the extra credit point. I am not gonna announce this is the only time you're gonna get that. Uh, so those of you who are here will know the answer. Here we go, pay attention. And it is tails. So that means that the eighth hour boys are the winning ballers. So eighth hour boys, will indeed get that extra credit point. Wow, what a live commercial there. Uh, so, <laughs> so we've got eighth hour boys, congratulations. You guys will be able to put plus one on your quiz. Now listen, once again, I'm not telling you that you won tomorrow. You guys who are here know that you won. The only way you're gonna get the extra credit is if you put plus one on your quiz paper. That's it. You put plus one, if you're in eighth hour, you will be granted that point. Uh, so just a little benefit for being here. Okay, now we're going back to the live review. We're going to talk about some of the short answer possibilities. Now, this is my basic clue. If you look at the review sheet, you see several things that say five this, three this, four this. Those are great possibilities for short answer questions, right? A great list and define, a list and explain, right? So those are definite possibilities. I think you should be clued into those. Here are some others. Number one, some factors that led to the spread of Islamic faith. I went through this in very big detail in section two. I had three points about what led to the spread of the Islamic faith. Another one, I told you to study the chart on page 271. 271. That chart is going to talk about the major differences between the Sunni and the Shia. And I just basically talked about it as well. So that's a very big possibility for short answer. Okay, so those are some of the things I wanted to share with you regarding the short answer possibilities. Now, the AP portion. I'm going to tell you some key things to research and some key things to focus on. I'm not going to tell you the questions. I'm not going to give away the answers. I want you to put in your due diligence and make sure that you're thinking historically. First of all, I want to focus on women's or female rights under Muhammad. How did they change? What are some things that they gained? What are some things they may have lost? You do the research. The reading talked about it both in the World History Patterns of Interaction and also in the AMSCO talked about some of these ideologies. There will be questions regarding this on tomorrow's AP portion. Second, there will be a primary source document which talks about what are called honor killings. You need to do the research on this. 
Honor killings are when male members of a family kill female members of their own family because they believe that the females have dishonored the family. I want you to do some research on this. What was going on with this? Is it still going on? How can this be happening? Okay, this is something that is really difficult to comprehend. We're talking about husbands killing their own wives, fathers killing their own daughters. Okay, this is what we're talking about here. Next, you need to know kind of the sources of authority, the Quran and Sharia law. You want to understand kind of how they impacted society and what are some of the major stipulations of those. We got to think about how Muhammad was a social reformer. What are some of the things that he put in place regarding women, regarding rights that created change? Finally, I want you to think about the growth of the city of Baghdad under the Abbasids. Remember, the Abbasid Caliphate moved the capital city from Damascus to Baghdad. And Baghdad became a major, major center of not only the Islamic world, uh, but of trade throughout this region, connecting Asia to the Middle East, to Europe, to Africa. So you want to take a look into the growth of Baghdad under Abbasid leadership. Okay, now I think it is fair to go to a question and answer session. I have 115 comments. I'm sure that a lot of them I'm sure that a lot of them are going to be checking in, letting me know that you are here, which is great. I am going to go back and check that out. Uh, so I am uh, really appreciative of you coming. I see a lot of you here. I'm, I'm very uh, happy that you are all here. I see a lot of key ballers. Okay. We're very well represented tonight. We have about 80 members of the realm on, which is great. I'm wondering if Billy, our imposter from Wald Lake, is on. I don't know, but I really like Billy. He's a cool guy. And I see some questions. I see some questions coming up right now. So let's take a look at these. All right. Let's see. Did Umar have any accomplishments that we have to note on the test or in his definition? Okay. He definitely does. As far as for the test, no. You just want to know that he was a rightly guided caliph and he was a friend of Muhammad. Uh, as far as like any details about Umar, there won't be any questions about that. So you don't really have to stress out on it. All right. Abu Bakr. We got a question. Who was Abu Bakr? Abu Bakr was the first caliph. Um, so he was cl closest friend of Muhammad, and so he became the first successor of Muhammad and leader of the caliphate of the Islamic world. Okay. Master Flo says, you should give everyone in here extra credit because we are all here trying our best. Yeah, um, I do agree with that you are trying your best. As far as giving everybody extra credit, I can't do that. I am offering uh, the volleyball game extra credit tomorrow evening at 630. So if you check in there, you will get plus one. Uh, but as far as giving everybody extra credit who's here, I don't think I'm going to do that. But I do appreciate you sticking up for your classmates. That's fantastic. Ah, I see. Colton says rigged. Some people are upset about the coin toss. Eighth hour is happy. 51% is higher than 49. That's true. This is a little weird. I don't know who Flo is, but it says, Roman, can I have your plus one? Oh, oh you're saying, can he have your extra credit? Nope. Non-transferable, sign of weakness. Can I donate my extra credit to someone who needs it more than me? Ooh, wow, wow. Uh, quite confident young man we have there. Okay. 
Leaf Gang member says absolutely outrageous, of course. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, it was an even coin flip. You saw it. I think it was your idea to do a coin flip, by the way, Master Y. Uh, let's see. Terrible comments in here. Why it's coming up with some type of ancient coin toss ritual? I guess I have to actually flip the coin. It's done and over with, so it, it is done. Wow, the coin toss was unfair. People are extremely disappointed. Wow, people are saying that we need to redo this. That they, People are really upset about this. Look at this. Like People are very mad. I was just trying to... I could just say no points for anyone. I could easily have done that. I was just trying to give it a shot. Wow, look at this. We have... Uh, what time does school end tomorrow? Uh, something like around 11.30, I think. Something like that. Depends on when your class's test gets done. Some are going to run faster than others based on how fast the proctor reads the instructions. That's what I've learned in my 17 years. Honor killings are not talked about in the Amscope book. No. Uh, I think maybe briefly mentioned, but honor killing is something that I just taught you, and you probably would need to do some research on that. Noah is arguing about the coin flip. Well, I mean, it. I agree with you that it doesn't determine who's smarter, but it was a tie. It was a tie, so we got to break it somehow. Come on, man. Come on, man. All right. Hello, Kaylee. I, I don't remember if I had you in class. I apologize if I do, but... Last time you said you, that you were in my class, I don't remember that, but thanks for joining. I do appreciate you. Do we have any real questions here? Wow, we got threats coming my way. Master Dom, this is a uh, this is AP US there. This I'm teaching AP World. You got to talk to your teacher about that question, my man. Hilarious. Yes. Okay. Here's a real question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you please define Khadijah and Jihad? Khadijah was Muhammad's first wife. Okay. So originally she ran a wealthy trading business and she ran trading caravans and Muhammad took a job working for her at his at the age of 25. Eventually they fall in love and they get married. Uh, so Khadijah was his first wife. Jihad refers to the striving, the striving to expand the Muslim empire. It also refers to the inner struggle against evil non-believers. That's basically the working definition of jihad. People are still mad about the coin toss. There's, I mean, I need some real questions here. All right, Caitlin, who was Ali? Ali was a controversial caliph. He was the fourth rightly guided caliph, and basically he was a bloodline relative of Muhammad. So when you think about Ali... One of the things that you got to take into consideration is that he was both Muhammad's cousin, so they were bloodline relative, but he also was Muhammad's son-in-law. So it means that Ali married Muhammad's daughter, okay? Uh, so that's, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people wanted Ali to be the first caliph, and that would be the Shia 
and they wanted anybody after Ali to be related to him, which meant that they would be related to Muhammad. Hmm. I don't know about that one. All right, great question by Hudson. I did show people a video in some of the early hours from Heimler History. So what Heimler's history does is he breaks down each and every topic in AMSCO. So if you go to his site, which is called Heimler's History on YouTube, and you go to his playlist for AP World History, you will find Unit 1. You go to Unit 1, Topic 2. It'll be 1.2. You watch that video, it is basically a summary of what's in AMSCO Topic 1.2. I also made my own video on this. If you go to my Chapter 10 playlist, you will find a re review video on the AP Topic 1.2. So you have a lot of options there if you want a summary for the AMSCO reading page 15 to 19. How many multiple choice and short answer? Um, I'm going to look at the quiz right now for you, Master Ethan, and count them up. 11 matching. And that means nine multiple choice. And then five short answer. Once again, 11 matching, nine multiple choice, five short answer. Yeah, essentially just tips to help you get ready for, of course, the AP portion. How big is the cube? How big is the cube in Mecca? And did Fortnite copy it? You're talking about the Kaaba? Kaaba is a pretty, pretty large box. Um, it's it's pretty big. It's probably about the size of like the. Uh, it's probably about the size of. Maybe the castle on campus, which is the, the small house, like right behind the new building there. Something along those lines. Hmm. Minus one. Minus one, Pierre. Minus one. All right. Did Uthman do anything that we need to know about? Uthman was assassinated in 656. And one of the big things, I mean, he's a rightly guided caliph, but one of the big things you got to understand is that most likely, most likely, people who were Shia had him assassinated. So they wanted Ali to be the leader. And so they got rid of Uthman so that Ali would be next in line. That's really what, that's one of the big picture things you should probably know. Audrey says, what is the House of Wisdom? The House of Wisdom was a center of learning stationed in Baghdad, Iraq. It was really like the world's first true research university where scholars from around the world, from Europe, from Africa, from Asia, would come to study. And it really became a great center of translation. They would translate some of the ancient Roman and some of the ancient Greek text into Arabic. And that's what kind of propagated them forward. Yes, yes, Nina. Thank you. You can get a plus one just by showing up to the game. So all the folks who are whining about the coin flip, you have an opportunity to get that point. Yes, we are on chapter 10. Yes. 
and AP Topic 1.2. Yes, Caitlin, you definitely need to know about the Bedouin ideals of courage, loyalty to the family, and also warrior skills. Oh, Heimler, H-E-I-M-L-E-R, Heimler's history, okay? Well, you know, Muhammad is, is the biggest key figure in this chapter because it's basically his life that people follow and it's basically his written, his stories talking about him getting the revelations from the angel Gabriel that formulate the Quran. So his teachings are what basically start this Islamic faith. And then the rightly guided caliphs, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, um, Ali, those are some of your big key figures. Other key figures like mentioned in uh, in section three, like Algebra, developer of Algebra, Al-Razi, one of the world's first philosophers slash doctors. Those are some other key Muslim figures. Do we need to know anything the rightly caliphs did for Islam spread and expansion? Well, all of them kind of did did expand, you know, and through military conquest for the most part. That would be the only thing you'd need to know in general. There won't be any specific questions about like what the caliphs did. Wow, I like it. Could be possible if you can razzle and dazzle, maybe some extra extra credit. I don't know. Well, Grant, it kind of depends on what your fit is looking like. You know what I mean? You want to have your tie, you know, correlated with your fit. If you're wearing a blazer, you want to make sure that your tie either offsets your blazer or if your blazer has different colors in it, maybe kind of match one of the colors of your tie with one of the colors of your blazer. You know, that's just kind of what I would say. But you you got great style. So, you know, you can kind of pick and choose how you would like. Nikki, are you talking about Nikki Minaj? Yeah, I think she's got some cool stuff. Yeah, for sure. If it's a different Nikki, let me know. Yeah, uh, I don't know. That'd be a tough one. I can't answer that one right now. Yeah, I like super bass. I like super bass, definitely. Yes, you definitely will. If you show up and support the volleyball team, you get extra credit. What else do we need to know about Umar besides that he was a rightly guided caliph? That's pretty much it. Um, he was the second rightly guided caliph. Uh, but that's really all you'll need to know for this test, Jojo. Wow, there's a lot of people still upset about the coin toss. All right, here we go. So for hijab, should we just know that it is a process of covering the body and the face? For women, for women, Elena, yes. Um, that That's the idea. It's the process of covering the, the face, the hair, uh, the body. In public, in public, mostly, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. See what I mean? Yeah, that, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Just looking for... Was Umar Muhammad's friend or was that a different guy? Abu Bakr was Muhammad's friend. Umar was Muhammad's friend. So was Ali. So was Uthman. All of the rightly guided caliphs 
personally knew Muhammad during, during his lifetime. I don't think you really will have a question about the order of the uh, of the caliphs. No, probably not, Chloe. You're probably okay without focusing on that. Um, all right. It looks like those are all the, the key questions. So we've been on for 40 minutes. I'll stay on for, uh, just, just a few more minutes to answer any final questions. I, I really do want you to keep it. Um, I really do want you to keep it appropriate on here. You know, I see some questions that are getting a little bit odd, uh, not on the topic of history. So I'm not going to pull those ones up. We did ask for a shout out for Ella Mulek. Ella Mulek's a baller, definitely. Definitely shout out for Ella. No doubt about it. Very nice kid. Uh, any other questions, though? Real questions before we call it a night. Once again, I do appreciate all of you. I, I really am glad that you've come to uh, to get your history review. Um, does get, it's got a little goofy over here on the comments, I can see. I don't know if you guys can see all the comments, but want to keep it on topic you know i'm trying to do my job for you and help you get ready for the quiz that's the most important thing can i explain the factors that led to the islamic faith well it, it really is predicated on muhammad and his actions and his preaching after he is in the caves meditating and praying and he is believed to have been visited by the angel gabriel at least that's what at least that's what uh, the Muslim practitioners believe. I'm going to have to block Andrea. She is saying some things that are just untrue. Yeah, I give her a timeout. Give her a timeout. All right. I think um, I think we're good to go. I want to uh, wish you guys a great night. Don't forget to say thank you to your parents. Make sure that you're praying for the right things. OK, say the prayer of gratitude and uh, thank the good Lord for all the great blessings that you have. Remember, we're in a really good spot. We're very fortunate to be here. We're fortunate to be here to uh, to, of course, talk about history, you know, when people are trying to find their next meal. So I think it's important to always reflect. And uh, say thank you to the good Lord for all the great blessings. Uh, with that being said, once again, I wish you a great night. Good luck on your PSAT exams tomorrow. I'll give those your best shot. And, uh, of course, I would love, love to see you ready to go on Thursday. Thanks again and have a great night.